Hello, my name is Benjamin Kepner of Global Social Media Marketing, and today we're going to be talking about how to create a sales playbook for your company or organization. In our case, it's going to be for a digital marketing agency. As part of today's training, I'm actually doing this training uh, improv live with my uh, sales support team in Evelyn, Anna, Daniel, and Addison. Um, we're going to all be working on this sales playbook project over the summer, and this is going to be uh, kind of a before and after video of this was our kickoff call and how we're going to kind of think about creating that sales playbook and then i'm going to do a follow-up video um, for everyone to watch on, on what our finished playbook looks like hopefully by the end of the summer so i'm going to go ahead and jump in um, so this is me actually talking to my team too just so everyone knows that's watching this video um, so the way that i'm going to kind of divide this for our team is i've got a google document um, that i sent out for our kind of our, our playbook I would recommend using something like this just because it's real time and you can edit it. Um, so the first thing I have for my team, um, I know this is a, a little silly video, but I, I think it's kind of relevant. Hopefully there's a lot of uh, people that have seen Waterboy. So I'm just gonna play the first minute uh, Need of Waterboy. logo for your brand? I've used the new Wix logo maker to create one for my startup. I'll show you how. Red brand the practices and I used to come up with the plays. Oh boy, was I good. I would write these uh, foolproof plays in my little green notebook that I had. The opposition didn't even know what hit him. And when Coach Kavanaugh was going to retire, me and Red, we just knew that one of us was going to be a successor. Hey, Red. Uh, if I had wish me luck. Well, not exactly. No, no. Actually, uh, I come by to get you to do a red little favor. Sure. What's up? Well, you know that uh, green notebook you use right on them football plays in? Well, I need to show Kevin all that I come up with some good play ideas. But you didn't come up with them. They're my plays. I need them. Klein, I'm going to have this book. One way or another. So might as well the damn thing go, because if you don't, you're going to get awfully, awfully physical around here. And I don't think you want that, do you? course red got the so just a little funny intro there like when i think of a playbook right i kind of think of like the water boy um i think about like when you talk about a professional athlete or coach right they have a designated playbook for all of their players on the team uh to understand how they're going to score or how they're going to win the game right so the way i like to think about a playbook is is kind of very similar to that no pun intended with water boy but just thinking about kind of that connection, right? That metaphorical thought of our sales playbook for our team global social media marketing is something that will serve as a training resource to teach our sales team on how to make sales. What are the objections that they're gonna face? What are the methodologies that we use? What are the tactics and strategies? And it really creates kind of this central place for everyone to understand how the company makes sales or how we've successfully made sales in the past. The story for our company is, is that I founded our company about two years ago. Unfortunately, to date, I'm the only person in the company that's made a sale. I have had some different people. I've had a couple different business development managers. I've tried a lot of different things. I've had a VP of sales at one point. And what I've started to realize is that me personally, I just need to improve on being a sales trainer. So I'm not blaming anyone on the team. And one of those solutions as a sales trainer is to have a sales playbook because it really just kind of serves as this is exactly our sales process and everything that we do. Um, and so that's where we're going to be kind of talking about that with this project. So I've got a second video that I'm not going to play, but I just want to show anyone that's watching this video or for the team to go reference this. So for my team, I would like you to watch this uh, video from HubSpot. It's called How to Create a Sa Sales Playbook. It's actually coming from HubSpot certification. They have a certification that's called the Inbound Sales Enablement Certification, which just means... For people out there that don't know what sales enablement means, sales enablement is having resources like sales sheets, PowerPoint decks, standard of procedures, onboarding documents, things like that. So it's really enabling you to make those sales. So for my team today on the call, I'd like you to go and watch this video after our meeting today. I'm not going to go ahead and play that right now. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the intro there, right? So 
what makes a successful sales playbook for our team you know i want it to be very interactive i want it to be web-based so that people can access it online having a pdf of it is great that's you know great to have internally but it also helps to have it where everyone can access it or update it at any time um, also, it's going to include videos, right? Our channel at, at Global Social Media Marketing, we have a YouTube channel. I've been pumping out videos now for a little over a year now where I'm literally teaching everyone on our team how to do things through videos. And I've just decided to turn those into YouTube training videos. Prime example is this video itself that will be turned into a, a training video on how to create a sales playbook. Um, and then they should be evergreen, right? Meaning that a sales playbook is not something that you create once and then you forget about it. It's something that you should create and then you should evolve. Uh, best practice, I think, is about to do it every quarter, right? So, if, you know, example of that might be like in recent events during the coronavirus, where we were in Q1 uh, completely changed in Q2, right? So our pretty much our entire sales strategy really had to pivot and kind of take a different direction due to the coronavirus. So it's good to do that, right? Every three months, just review the playbook, see what may or may not have changed. Um, and what should be included in this sales playbook, right? So it should include things such as sales processes, systems, and content that you want your business development managers to share with those prospects during the, the places in that sales process. So for example, Addison or Anna, who are business development managers, if they're having a email or a phone call with a prospect, they're going to get different information depending upon where they are in the buyer's journey cycle. They might be in an exploratory phase where they don't really know what they want. They're kind of trying to figure out like what services are available, how much that might cost. There might be other medium sized businesses that already have a budget for social media marketing in our case where, you know, they know what their monthly budget is. They know that their, you know, most successful channel is Facebook. They run around Facebook lead ads, maybe, for example, something like that. So in each phases of those different cycles, there's a different communication and there's a different piece of content that should be sent from our business development managers to educate those people and make sure that they're handling any of those objections. Um, next thing, kind of what a, what a, what a sales enablement playbook does is it, it defines the buyer personas, right? And so we have some buyer personas, for example, most of our buyer personas who we would be selling our services to would be people like business owners, right? I've found in my experience, I can sell to a lot of different buyer personas. I might be selling to a VP of marketing that's trying to outsource their marketing to us. I might sell to a COO or a CFO that controls all the financial decisions in the company, or I might be selling to the business owner directly because they're the you know the decision making power right they're they're kind of at the top of the totem pole and they're able to make those decisions so understanding within a given company right who is the person that you're selling to number one but then also thinking about like maybe what industry that they're selling into right so we sell into multiple different industries um, currently right now we have clients in travel we have a client in nonprofit. We have a client in uh, trash management and we recently just closed a client in Australia last week that's going to be doing um, kind of like uh, real estate income. So, you know, we've got a lot of different industries. So it's important when you're mapping out these buyer personas to also understand what industry that they're in. Right. So as a business owner of a travel company might have different pain points versus a business owner of, let's say, a real estate company. Right. So understanding those kind of building out those buyer personas. Think of those as kind of like fictional characters. If you're reading a book, right, um, each character would have its own traits and each character would have its own kind of pain points. Um, within that, we want to kind of have a content marketing plan strategy for that. So that really just kind of means like creating like, you know, who is the person? What are their pain points? What features does our potential product or service offer to benefit and solve those pain points? And then what does our content framework look like for those people? Do they prefer watching videos? Do they like reading blog articles? Do they just prefer a quick little short email? Do they you know, appreciate a weekly call? There's a lot of different ways to do that. So in this sales playbook, you're gonna answer all of those questions and, and know what are the right answers to their questions or to their pain points based upon where they are in that buyer journey cycle. Um, so. For our play, playbook, my goal is to try to get Anna and Addison to make our company's first sale outside of me. And um, with that being said, the sales playbook is going to be one of those things 
that's going to help empower them to make those sales. So what are the key sections in this playbook that we're going to be included are what to know, what to do, what to say, and what to show. What to know, for example, in our case is knowing what services we're selling, right? So we're a digital marketing agency that specifically focuses on social media marketing. That's kind of like our bread and butter that we consider ourselves experts at. So we are selling, for example, social media marketing services. And then what is the sales me sales methodology that we're using and what persona? So our sales methodologies that we're using today is we use things such as like email, uh, phone calling, LinkedIn, social media, um, online advertising. We've done event marketing in the past where we've sponsored events. Um, there's a whole list and that's what my team is going to be kind of drawing up in this playbook. So I'm not going to go into those, but those are some examples. And I already kind of talked about the people that we sell to majority of who we sell to are normally business owners because they have the decision making power to buy our services. Um, what to do, right? This is kind of where the playbook really helps people like maybe potentially Anna or Addison to know what are the tactics and strategies that they need to take before their phone calls, during their communications or email phone calls, and after they, they meet with a prospect or they're trying to you know turn them into a client. Um, what to say is very important, right? I've already mentioned you have different buyer personas that have different pain points. So your messaging can't be the same for all these different uh, personas. So understanding, you know, what, what messaging resonates with them, um, storylines of our customers, right? So a good example of that is like if we were selling to a new travel client, we already have an existing travel client. So that's a really good example for us to kind of bring up, you know, what have we been doing in that industry? What have we, you know, seen be successful with our services with that type of industry or client? Um, and then what are those conversations and questions going to look like, right? So our sales team, hopefully in time, will be able to understand from the sales playbook, like, what are the typical questions that a new prospect might ask? And what would that conversation look like in a given email or phone call exchange? Final thing is what to show. Um, you know, you can show a lot of different things in sales, right? I think a lot of old school salespeople have these like really kind of like 90s look like sales sheets and they like send this or they get they try to give like a really long PowerPoint presentation. Um, I'm trying to kind of differentiate us a little bit because I like videos. I think videos are really good in storytelling. Um, you can do anything from music to kind of drive some emotion. You can do screen sharing like I'm doing right now and show them things. Um, so I think videos are a really good thing. They come across really personable um, in sales, even as simple as doing maybe like a quick like 15 second intro in your email, right? Like instead of just saying, hey, my name's Anna, I'm reaching out to you. Um, it could be a quick little 15 second, you know, uh, screen recording with her face saying hello. Um, that will just really kind of set herself apart from any other salesperson, right? Because probably a lot of people are not taking time to do that. So compelling uh, visual content that drives emotion is also really good. So this is kind of like the overview um, of how to do a sales playbook. Again, I would recommend anyone to kind of watch the uh, the water boy into the HubSpot um, how to. I think that gives kind of a good intro of like where my head is with you know what that means and how we create this. And so for us, I've already got a Google Doc started, and in this uh, training video that I'm creating right now, I'm actually in a, in a call with my team. So I'm actually mapping out. So this is maybe how you might want to map it out for your sales team. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, everyone's different, but I'm going to kind of walk through this. So um, for our team, I'm going to be saying for the summer, everyone needs to commit five hours per week to work on this. Um, I'm going to try to finish this sales playbook over about a two to three month span. Mainly the reason for that is because a lot of people in our team, I feel like, um, are, are still relatively new and they don't really understand all of our sales processes or sales cycles. So I'm going to give them some exploration time. Um, to do this on their own. I'm actually not going to answer any of their sales que questions in the first month here. So I'm going to give them this video. I'm going to give them this Google Doc and the PDF that we'll talk about here in a second. And I'm going to let them run with it, let them get their own ideas, let them use critical thinking, be inquisitive. We do have people on our team such as Anna and Daniel that have been with the company for a while. So I feel like they at least have you know a pretty decent understanding of our sales. And I'm going to let the team collaborate. So my advice for our team is that they collaborate with their team members, um, you know, problem solve this without going to their sales leader right now, which is me in that case, um, and trying to finish a section per week. I think that's pretty realistic. Um, if they don't finish a section per week, that's okay, but that's kind of how I'm mapping this out. 
Um, and then I'm kind of saying to my team, look, I don't want to answer any of your questions right now. I want you to kind of go through this, try to answer what you can, do your research on your own. And then after about a month or two, um, we'll have another team meeting and we'll kind of talk it through. So I'm kind of saying, you know, if you have any questions in sales to date, um, to ask Daniel and Anna because they've been with our company a little bit longer. Um, so the way that I'm kind of uh, developing this this out into different sections, I've got Anna, who's been on our team the longest, um, who's our business development manager, and I'm going to kind of have her overseeing all of the sections. She doesn't need to be stressed out about, you know, having to edit each section, but it's more that Anna is a resource because she's been with our company. She's onboarded clients. She's seen us lose clients. Um, she's seen the things that I've done. She's also even tried to do sales for herself as well. So I'm going to have her kind of serve as the glue to our team and answering any sales questions that the team might have. And what I'm kind of outlining for Anna is taking things that she's done. So she needs to go back and she needs to add into this document any old sales email templates that she may have created when she did reach outs. I know her and I had developed some of those. She's also been very uh, impactful for our company in creating a number of different sales sheets that explain here's our pricing and here's our services and what's included in those services. So we want to make sure that our team has all of those. I want to make sure that she's uploaded those to our sales folder. We're just going to use like a Google Drive sales folder, right, where we house all of our kind of sales documents. So you can kind of see like here's our PDF and then that will also include like our playbook. Um, you can also see just quickly, right, here's some examples of some of the sales sheets that she had. So I just want to make sure that she's uploaded all of those so that the team has those. Um, because those are going to you know, help them in, in creating this sales playbook, is looking at any type of what we call sales enablement resources that she may have created with me since she's been with our company. She also did have the chance to go through some of um, some lead generation funnels. So I want her to maybe talk about what that process looked like. We were a part of an accelerator academy last year. Uh, shout out to Kat Howell in New Zealand. Um, so we kind of went through that whole process that taught us how to create an automated lead generation funnel so that we don't have to cold call people, right? In in 2020, what I've realized is that cold calling for me is a waste of time. Um, I've given uh, even Anna the opportunity to do some cold calling and it really just, it doesn't uh, correlate because you're calling on people that are not searching for your services. You're kind of um, you're using the old school sales methodology, right? Where you look at like Wolf of Wall Street with like Leonardo DiCaprio or something, right? And they used to be in those desks and they would call people. Um, you know, the new age sales now is you are an educator. You know, consumers have multiple options. They have the internet available. Um, you know, for example, with our travel client, I tell them all the time, average traveler looks at 10 different websites before they're gonna book a vacation. So same case with us. Um, we don't maybe want to go just cold in. We want to develop content that draws them in. That's called inbound marketing or inbound sales so that we can kind of qualify them because we know that we're trying to solve their pain points. So I'm going to have her kind of, you know, add in any of that stuff that we did there. We've also had a number of different lead spreadsheets. So we use for our company, we use Google Sheets. We're going to be implementing over the summer our first CRM system, which I'm really happy about. For anyone that doesn't know what that means, CRM just stands for Customer Relationship Management. It's a technology tool that allows you to upload all of your contacts and see where they are in that buyer journey cycle. That's really important, as I mentioned earlier on in the playbook, because you give a buyer a specific message based upon where they are. So, for example, if we upload a bunch of leads, I want to know if we've talked to them in the past. Have we emailed them? Have we talked to them on the phone? Did we ever send them a proposal? Did they have a pricing objection? Really understanding where they are. So I'm going to be looking for Anna to go back. Um, we've worked on a number of different things that she's done with me. We've done like insurance leads. We've had business owner leads. So I want to just make sure that she's got all of those spreadsheets at least listed in the sales playbook so that everyone else in our team knows, hey, these are where these leads are coming from. And as our team evolves this summer, um, Addison's what, what she's going to be doing, who's new on our team, she's going to be kind of the leader of the new CRM system. So she's going to be working with Anna to say, hey, Anna, you know, where are these lists? Can we get these into the CRM system? And then we'll have one central database, right? Um, early on as a startup, we didn't have the, uh, the financial capabilities to afford a CRM. Go High Level is what we're going to be using because it was actually developed by marketing agencies for marketing agencies, and it's a really cheap price point. 
Um, I've used a number of different CRMs too, just to give some shout outs, right? I've used things such as like Active Campaign and HubSpot. Um, and, and those are some great tools too. Salesforce is very well known, but it's not very economical. So um, there's not a wrong or right way for a right CRM. It's just kind of what works for your team and what people can easily use. So we're gonna be using Go High Level and Anna will be kind of working with Addison over the summer to update that and make sure that we're running some different campaigns. The main benefit of a CRM to kind of close that all with is that it lets me automate things, right? It keeps a central place where everyone in the company can see this is the person's name, who last talked to them, what that communication looked like, and then sending automated follow-ups, right? As a human being, I've I've personally tracked it. I probably can't talk to more than 100 people in a day. When I was like in the peak of my sales career, I could do about 60 phone calls, 40 emails in a day. Um, and then I just was burned out after that. Um, so what a CRM does is you can automate those things. We can do things such as automated dialers. We're automatically calling people. We can send emails, do email blasts. Um, that's the main benefit of CRM and it creates kind of a transparency so everyone knows where that person is in the buying cycle. Um, so then after that, I've kind of caught for Anna, you know, anything that else that she's learned with me during her time, she's going to make sure that it's in the drive folder. Um, and she's going to kind of serve as, let's say, the point guard of the team um, for the first six weeks of answering any sales questions. Because I feel like Anna and I have you know, had enough time. Um, she's been with us for a year where she has a good understanding of sales and she can probably answer a lot of um, some of the questions that maybe some other people had. So that's how we're going to frame it. Um, I've also added in a section from our Accelerator Academy. I mentioned to Kat Howell, she kind of, that's a benefit of an accelerator program. So anyone that's creating a sales playbook, I would highly recommend um, if you're really serious about investing in yourself and your company that you do go through something like an Accelerator Academy. Accelerator just means that you are being connected to professionals that went down the same path that you already went down in your industry, right? So we're a digital marketing agency or a social media company. We went through Kat Hall's program. She owns a you know, 10 to $20 million digital marketing agency, and that's what we're aspiring to be. So she is kind of like already done you know, what it takes to get there and then showed us. We went through that, and now we're trying to implement those things kind of coming out from that. So in our playbook, there's going to be a section here where I've highlighted it in yellow that says notes to add into the HubSpot playbook from Benjamin Accelerator Academy experience. So these are all the things that I took um, when I was going crazy way back when in November, I was working really long hours. I was going through the Academy. All of this stuff is coming from the actual Academy where it's like somebody else literally telling me like, Hey, this is what's worked for us. This is how we've made sales. Um, and so I've got that all in here. I'm going to just make sure that that's pretty crystal clear um, for our whole team because it is pretty long just to make sure that it's that it's um, highlighted in yellow. You can see all those different things from like sales scripts to, you know, walking them through like how to make the sale when you're talking to them to some of the bot messaging that she was kind of teaching us common objections. Right. These are all really important things to kind of understand um, and then kind of the technology tools here at the bottom. So these are all things um, that I um, learned through the Accelerator Academy. And what I'm looking for Anna to do with that section is just to take anything that's in yellow and for now, not edit it, but just copy it or cut it and put it into the relevant sections of the playbook itself. So to kind of take a step back, right, you might be wondering like, you know, where is this playbook living? Where, where is Benjamin using this structure? In our team email, when I sent it out, there was an attachment from the HubSpot sales enablement certification, right? So this isn't something that I've created proprietary. It's, you know, there's multiple books that have been written by sales leaders, but HubSpot finally decided, hey, let's create this into a certification and let's make a workbook to help people actually do that, right? So this is actually coming from Kyle Jepson, who's the, the sales enablement instructor. I went through this whole program, I got the certification, and then at the end, they want you to actually do that. So that, that's what this is. So for each of our team members, they're gonna have a dedicated section, right? So what I'm just saying here early on for Anna is, is you're going to be looking at all the sections because you're going to be kind of the point for knowing a lot of the salespeople, but each person will have their own section. So Anna, will, in her case, won't necessarily have to like fill in all the answers. She's going to be kind of providing support. Um, and then what she's going to be doing more and filling in the answers is taking the Accelerator Academy stuff, right? So anything that I've highlighted in yellow, she needs to figure out based upon 
the HubSpot playbook, right? Where of those accelerator, accelerator Academy notes best fit into these sections, right? So that's where she's going to kind of manage, you know, a, an extra thing. I know a lot of people aren't going to have the funds to go through Accelerator Academies, but that's how we're going about it. And that's how I would recommend um, when you finish your Accelerator Academy, if you're writing a playbook to kind of maybe start with just kind of um, cutting and pasting where it fits and then editing it from there. Um, so then kind of going back uh, to our um, sales playbook right at the top for our project. So that's kind of pretty much everything I have for, for Anna's section. Um, and then I kind of mentioned, right, that she's going to be working on the on the leads list and going through go high level. So that's Anna's section. Um, the next section that I have is for Daniel. Daniel's our content writer. He is pretty much like the lead for anything on the finished playbook itself, right? Daniel is not in sales. He's learning. He's he's gotten to a point now where I feel like he's comfortable in creating sales funnels for us. Um, if anyone's not familiar with what a sales funnel is, to keep it very simple for you is it's a process in which shows how somebody finds your business from the point of, let's say, for an example, a Facebook ad that then goes to a potential landing page that has a value offer. Um, in our case, it might be like a free case study or a free training video or an ebook or you know something else like that. They're then asking for that, uh, that value offer. They fill in their information, right? So then we're doing what we call like a lead capture there through a form. They submit that form and then they're then taken to book a meeting with me, right? When we think about sales, um, maybe in like a smaller organization or let's say you have thousands of customers, right? You have to be really careful with your time as a salesperson. Um, I'm going to be using a, a meeting scheduler called Calendly. Um, that's what I use to kind of try to automate this. This is going to be something new for our company over the summer. I'm going to be sending a follow-up email to our team after this call on how that's going to work but this is how i'm able to get these phone calls and pretty much what it's allowing me to do is just to book uh meetings right to say okay here's my calendar first come first serve you book my times that i'm available and then i'm not wasting all this time going back and forth like hey what time works for you like can you do this time you know texting email it literally just gives them my calendar says here's my calendar book it if you book it before someone else, then you got that spot. And, and then it kind of just automates that. Then I get an email and I see that I've got an appointment and then I kind of you know pre-qualify them. I might add questions. We're not gonna get into all that. I do have another training video that will link to this that I put out uh, just last week on Calendly. And I think it's a great tool for people that are trying to be careful about their time and automate you know booking some of their meetings. So Daniel's learned a lot how to do those things. So he'll definitely provide some insight on how to create kind of sales funnels, I think, in this. What I'm looking for Daniel to do is his role is to kind of be the main editor of this sales playbook, right? So everyone on the team, minus Daniel and Anna, pretty much has a designated section where they're going to be filling in those questions, right, that I showed early on with this, right? So each person is going to use this document coming from HubSpot and just make sure that they type out their questions. So you can kind of just see like, as an example for, for section one, right? I started typing out the questions where it says, you know, aligning goals. Um, and there's the question right there, right? You can see aligning goals. So what I want each person on our team to do for their designated section is I want you to type out the questions and then answer those questions, right? Um, that way we know exactly what the questions are and we're gonna be doing it in a Google doc because that way we can edit it um, and both work together in collaborative way in real time. So what Daniel's going to be doing is he's going to be reviewing each section. He's going to be looking at, does this all make sense? Um, does it flow right? You know, the main point of this playbook is not for me to give this to potential clients or do a value offer for us to generate leads. It's really the main purpose of this is to show our sales team or potential future sales team how we make sales and make it crystal clear for everyone in the company, this is how we do these things and that it's it's logical they can read it um i don't want this thing to be too long either um i don't have a set number on like you know this is best practice for sales playbook so i might challenge daniel and say daniel go google that go see you know what's the typical length of a sales playbook um right now looking at this i think this is something like 37 pages i think the uh the hubspot one when you look at this right there's is like 44 um, there's a little bit of fluff here, like at the beginning, right, where they're kind of saying like table of contents and the intro, and they're kind of giving you some some introductory keywords, right, like buyer persona, how we talked about earlier. 
Um, but, you know, really, I think for me, when I think about it, you know, 30 to 40 pages max, um, because probably none of my salespeople are going to want to read 40 pages. Um, and I just want to make it that it's really concise for them, right? Like it shouldn't be hard or super complex or really, really draining. This should be really simple where they can come into this at any time. Like they could literally pull up the playbook if they're on a sales call and like look up the objection that they're facing in that moment. Um, so that's what I want is to have it really well organized, simple to find, concise, probably not over 30 to 40 pages. And Daniel will be kind of the editor of that, make sure it's grammatically correct. Um, also what we have internally for our company that m other people might have or they may not um, is we have actual articles on our website that have been written about sales. All of these articles were done um, during my time going through getting the inbound sales certification or in other types of advertising strategies that I've run through funnels, as I've mentioned to you, right? Funnels can be triggered by multiple different types of channels um, or just my sales experience, right? I've been doing sales for 10 years now, so um, I'm not saying that I'm a sales expert, but I like to think if I built a company that I'm, I must understand sales, you know, to a certain extent to be um, a successful salesman to build a company if I'm if I'm making all the sales in the company. So um, what I would say for Daniel is using these different types of blog articles, number one, and um, we have uh, like a, on our blog, we have like categories, right, where we categorize. You can see, for example, this one is uncategorized, but what I'll be looking for Daniel to do is to make sure that any of the blog articles on our website, number one, that are categorized as sales or ones that need to be categorized as sales as that they are on the website, number one, but then he goes in and he finds those sales articles on our website and that he just copies those links and that he pastes those relevant articles into the uh, relevant section, right? So I know at some point in this playbook, there's something around like what resources does your sales team have? Do they have a website? That's where I want Daniel to kind of come in and put all of those articles how I'm kind of going to uh, delegate that out for our team is, is that Daniel's working on other projects. So, you know, we, I think I've written personally around 20 articles related to sales on how to make sales for our company. So that's a lot for him to handle and he doesn't have that bandwidth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, kind of Addison and Perry, who's not in our call right now. He's going to be a new team member for us, but he'll be helping too, where Addison and Perry are going to be pretty much, they're going to help Daniel with one article per week, right? That would turn into like over the course of the summer, hopefully we'd have all 20 articles done by the end of the summer. And what that will help me do also is saying like, hey, Addison and Perry, like every week you have one article to edit and they're going to go through it first. And then they're going to go to Daniel and they're going to say, Daniel, hey, I've read through this sales article. I've edited it for you based upon best practices that you've created for the website. And then Daniel's going to say, okay, thank you for helping me out. Um, I'm going to review this. And then he's going to say, you know, this article is done and he's going to send it to me. So that's kind of how our process is going to work for that. Um, that's going to serve as a learning purpose too, because it's going to teach Addison and Perry um, like organically how I've done sales through our article. And it's also going to help Daniel understand too, um, as he's helping with the sales playbook, oh, wow, Benjamin's actually written a, a lot about some of these things already in blog articles on the website that people probably just didn't know about. And like he can include those. So he's going to include all those links once those articles are done that will serve as another resource. Um, he's also going to be adding in that sales funnel structure that I talked about. So I want to make sure that Daniel, since he has a lot of experience managing the website as kind of our lead editor and writer, um, that the rest of the sales team knows how that works, right? What are the qualifying questions that we're asking? How do we improve that? Um, I can tell you recently, I've been running some YouTube ads and I got about seven leads just yesterday. I have like eight sales calls today and I already had two no-shows, right? And so how do we improve people not showing up to their meetings? How do we unqualify people that um, they don't have a budget, for example, right? We're, we're a for-profit company. We don't work for free. Um, so, you know, getting rid of those people that are maybe just kind of shopping around or, or trying to get freebie stuff, um, kind of eliminating those people. So what does that look like, right? And then I'm kind of just saying here at the end, like uh, Daniel is, uh, you know, whatever you want to, I forget what that guy's name was, right? Not Bobby Boucher, but the, the coach and water boy, right? Daniel's kind of the water boy coach of he's going to have this, you know, crystal clear playbook for everyone to use. 
And um, that's really kind of going to guide our team for the rest of the year on how we make sales. So he's going to be the lead editor and writer. He's going to be helping with those blog articles. And then he's going to kind of serve as the focal point for explaining how funnels work because I feel like he's had the most experience with that so far. Um, everybody else, um, we've got Evelyn, Addison, and Perry, um, is going to be uh, having a designated section, right? So section four, section five, section six, for example, for uh, Evelyn is going to be as simple as just kind of coming into that HubSpot uh, training academy saying, okay, my section is, you know, section four or five, for example, let's just say you scroll down. Okay, there's section four, right? I need to read this through. I need to, you know, watch any of the training videos or anything that HubSpot might have provided. And then I literally need to copy this or type it however you want to do it and make sure that these questions are in the Google Doc. And then I start answering these questions. Um, I want you to go through these. I know, for example, for some of these people, this is new, like Evelyn, Addison, and Perry are, um, are relatively new in our company where they've been with us for less than six months. So they might not know how to answer those questions. So that's where I want Daniel and Anna um, in the first month to support them in answering any of those questions. They're more than welcome to do phone calls, you know, without me, uh, set up Google Hangout meetings, do email. Um, I would even encourage the team to maybe have a working session together. I'm just trying to, as a sales trainer or the sales leader in our company, encourage people to go learn some of this stuff because a lot of the answers to this question are already in this document, right? You can already see I've got 37 pages of copy in here. So what I would recommend is when you're answering your sections, um, go through this document first, see what's in there, see what came out of the Accelerator Academy, um, see what's in some of these blog articles maybe as you go through them. I know it's a lot of information. That's why this is a summer project. It's going to take a long time. Um, but that's kind of what I'm advising to these people on the team is, hey, don't ask me these questions yet. Go through all the sales resources that we've created, all the information that's already in the playbook. And then once you've edited your sections and you feel like you've answered them to the best of your ability, um, we're going to come together as a sales team in another month or in six weeks from now. And then I'm going to just give it a free live Q&A. And they're going to show me what the playbook looks like in a rough draft form by that point, hopefully in about a month and a half. Um, and then they're going to just ask me questions like, hey, Benjamin, how do you make sales from YouTube? Or, hey, Benjamin, when you take a call, what, what happens in this situation? Like, I'm happy to do that, but early on here, I want to challenge them to learn on their own, and I think that will really help them learn our sales process that much better. Um, so I'm kind of giving, for example, for Evelyn, I've already uh, delegated out your sections. Um, I've also got for her uh, a many chat section. She's been really involved with many chat, which if anyone's not familiar with that, is just a chat messaging solution. Um, so that will kind of show people how to interact with like a chat bot, how do you qualify people um, through things like that. Um, she's also um, kind of taking over our Instagram as of recently this year. So I also kind of want her, her to kind of manage that. Um, I've also kind of had that for Anna too. You know, she's had a lot of experience with our, our GSMM Facebook. So I'm kind of saying like within a given social media uh, channel, like in our playbook, like maybe Anna can really kind of dive in and, and help people out, explain how a Facebook sales strategy works. Uh, Evelyn can kind of explain how an Instagram sales strategy works because they have experience doing that. Um, maybe not making sales for us yet, but they do have experience having conversations, trying to get um, sponsorships, trying to get us on podcasts, things like that. So they can kind of, you know, map out maybe what an ideal sales strategy would look like from those channels. Um, and then the last thing I have for Evelyn is just that we have some text images in here, right? So just to shine, kind of show you an example of that, um, some of these things were from our Accelerator Academy. So I've got a whole section here on how to develop strategic partnerships. And you can see that these were like screenshots, right? Where I was like going through uh, the Accelerator Academy last year and I was like taking screenshots because I just didn't have enough time to type out the notes. So what I'm just looking for an Evelyn in, in that is, you know, anything that's a text-based image in this document, just turn this into actual like written copy, right? So just come in here and, and start typing it out um, and then put it into the actual section that, it, that it's most relevant for. Um, we will use images in our sales playbook. I do want it to be visually stunning, but anything that um, is like text-based, uh, it's not really important. But if it's something like this, right, that's kind of like more icons or it's an image or something or a diagram that's explaining something in our sales processes, perfectly fine. I think that's great too. And I, and I would also recommend, again, you know, what makes a good sales playbook is not all text, right? 
Um, it needs to be uh, able to be digested by multiple learners. And some people are visual learners. So I do want to have visuals. I do want to have videos and I do want to have text and I do want to have, you know, other informational links um, to link out for, for the further information. Um, so that's everything with uh, Evelyn's section. So then kind of moving on to Addison. Um, she's going to have her designated sections as well from the playbook. So I've assigned one, two, and three for her. Um, I'm going to be involving Addison maybe more with the YouTube. I do have her kind of going through some Facebook marketing courses that we offer, um, working with Anna her early on because they are um, both in the similar role. But I'm going to have her maybe kind of focus on YouTube later on. I want her to kind of just focus on filling in the sections first, um, working on editing one blog article with Daniel per week before she really moves on to this section. This might happen for her maybe in month two or something like that later on. Um, but I'm going to have her doing that. And then the other big thing for, for Addison, right, is she's going to be kind of the point on our go high level CRM. So um, there will be a, a time later on this summer where hopefully we'll have everything set up and she'll be more familiar with that. And so I want her to kind of be the leader with Perry on explaining how our CM works in the sales playbook. How do we set up automated nurturing campaigns through text messages that then lead to automated dialers that then have follow up? Uh, emails, right? Like looking at those different kind of uh, communication streams and how those flow. Um, next person I have here is Perry. He's not on our call today, but he is just joining our team this week. He's also going to be helping with the CRM. Um, and then I'm going to be having him work on kind of more of the LinkedIn sales strategy. Um, and then I'm going to be having him support Daniel in editing one blog article as well with his two sections here. Um, last person on here is me. I'm the CEO of Global Social Media Marketing and also kind of the sales leader. My kind of approach with all this is I'm going to have our team start all of this without me um, because I know how to make sales, right? It, this is not for me. Um, it's for the company. It's, it's really for me to teach people what I know because they can't be me, right? Like when you're on a phone call with a given prospect, um, they can't just, you know, the, put the, the prospect on hold and say, hey, Benjamin, like, or hey, um, Hey, Bobby Sue, like I need to go ask my, my, my boss, Benjamin, how I can answer your question, right? They have to be able to think on their feet, answer those questions, know the follow-ups. Um, and, I, and I personally just don't have the bandwidth, right? I, I already told you like my day is already booked all day. Um, so I have to empower my team and make sure that they know how to have those conversations and what they provide. So early on stages for me in this playbook as, as the sales leaders, I'm going to give it to my team. They're going to start on it about for about a month you know, maybe five to six weeks, they're going to try to work on it without asking me any sales questions. I repeat, without asking any sales questions. And then we're going to come together and we're going to have a follow-up meeting as a sales team. And then they're going to ask me as many questions as they want. Any, you know, things that they couldn't find in their research, any processes maybe that Anna and Daniel still don't understand, or maybe just things that they found in their research. Like, hey, Benjamin, have you seen what so-and-so competitor is doing? Do we do that? How do we do that? How do we do it differently? Um, so those types of things, right? And so that's kind of what I have for me. Um, I will ultimately be finishing the playbook with uh, Daniel will be kind of like when we get to that final stage, right? When we have all the information there, everyone understands all their sections have been filled in. We've got all the blog articles. Go High Level is set up as CRM system. People will have access to that. Um, by the end of the summer, that's my goal. There is no right or wrong way. Um, some sales organizations might move faster. Um, some might not. Um, but that's how we're going to kind of do it. And you can kind of see I've got all the sections in here. So I'll just kind of scroll through it so that you guys can see a lot of the stuff in the yellow, again, is pretty much all the accelerator. So um, anything that's missing right now is pretty much everything from that HubSpot uh, playbook, which I showed earlier here, right? It's 44 pages. None of these questions have been typed out. Um, none of these activity things have been typed out. So these all need to be put into that Google document and filled in. Um, they do include, uh, you know, specific keywords at the table of contents in the beginning. So if you don't know what marketing velocity means, you can go look that up. Um, and then that's what that looks like. And so you can kind of see that like, this is a, an extensive uh, playbook or document that the company will have moving forward. And then uh, once we complete the, the workbook, my goal is to submit this to Kyle. Um, Kyle and I have not had a formal communication, but he is kind of like the... Uh, quote unquote, like sales enablement instructor expert um, out there right now from, you know, all the things that I'm seeing in sales playbooks. So my goal is once this is done, number one, like my primary goal is to empower Anna and Addison, hopefully to make their first sale. 
um, you know, without me. But then the second goal is for me to submit this to HubSpot and say, HubSpot, here's our sales playbook. Um, I'd love to schedule an hour with you, Kyle, to review this as a sales enablement expert and see um, what are we missing? Um, how can we improve this? Um, you know, why am I failing right now as a sales leader to not empower the rest of my team? And how do I empower them to make those sales? So with everything being said, uh, that's everything I have um, for this kind of how-to video on how to do a sales playbook. I hope it's been um, informative and helpful. And we're going to do a follow-up video um, at the end of the summer here on all of this, on what our final playbook looks like. And um, we might also record to some of the questions that come up um, once we get into it in about a month or two from the team um, so that I can show people how I think about handling certain uh, sales situations or answering their questions. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and take care.